בוקר טוב רבותיי, ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם שהכל נהיה בדברו. Speaking of 72, 72 is כמניין Hesed is the energy we're dealing with right now. Today is the last of the four days after Kippur that we're drawing down an energy of Chesed from a very, very high place into our Neshama. It's being illuminated. So therefore, what should we do? Be involved in Chesed, be involved in kindness, be involved in good deeds. Help your parents, help your siblings, help your neighbors. Do, and by doing such, you connect to this energy of Hasadim. Tonight we have the holiday of Sukkot, Bezrat Hashem. Sheyavu aleinu litova velivracha. We will come inside the Sukkah. We will make a Sheyachayanu inside the Barakha of Kiddush. Yes, after Kiddush, we say Sheyachayanu v'kimanu v'yignanu v'azman hazeh. Not to forget to make the Barakha of Lishev Basukkah. Lishev Basukkah, it's when you're gonna, in the Kiddush, you could say it in the Kiddush. Anytime you don't say have Kiddush, then you're gonna say Lishev Basukkah every time you eat, Bread inside the sukkah. Yeah, yeah. In the kiddush, you're going to say lishev basukkah. And pay attention in your sidur to follow the right sequence. The shayachayan and lishev basukkah tonight is different than tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. We're going to get into the details more tonight, Bezrat Hashem. But ech sheyeh, this holiday is v'samachta b'chagecha v'ayita ach sameach. You must make sure to fulfill the most difficult mitzvah of this holiday. What is the most difficult mitzvah of this holiday? Not to be happy, it's to be utterly happy. It's to be completely happy, only happy. That's the most difficult mitzvah. <coughs> Rafi, I like the keeper. It's a new style, I like it. It got me nervous. I thought, I was, who's the Syrian guy who walked into the synagogue? Huh? No, I was like, who's the Syrian guy who walked in? Anyway, <coughs> we are this week. Gonna complete the entire Torah. Can you imagine? All of the parashiyot came to an end. This week's parashah is parashat. Well, we're not gonna have a parashah. We're gonna read it at Simchat Torah. We're gonna read parashat Vezot Abelacha. Torah writes, Vezot Abelacha. This is the blessing that Moshe blessed Isha Elohim, man of God. Ed Bnei Israel if name Moshe blessed the Jewish people before he died. Why? Why you need to bless them? Moshe was showing them that even though I was tough with you. I still hold of you. I still respect each one of you. I still love each one of you. And I want to bless each one of you. From here we see how important it is to voice thoughts of appreciation and gratitude to people. To tell them Hazaku Baruch. To give them a Baracha, a Baruch Oboshi, etc. It's very, very important. We learn this from Moshe Rabbeinu. Amru Hazal. Lo zakha Moshe shikarei shayluhim at shiberech et Yisrael. Unbelievable. When was Moshe called man of God? Only when he blessed the Jewish people. Until he blessed the Jewish people, he was not of the status of Isha Elohim, man of God. He only became Isha Elohim, man of God, when he was able to, when he blessed the Jewish people. From here we see how important it is to give berachot, how important it is to love each other in order to bless each other. Our rabbis say that the Kohen is the one who blesses the Jewish people. Why the Kohen is the one who blesses the Jewish people? Why, Mr. Moloch Kadnov, and not the next guy? They're all about shalom. Kohanim are about shalom. They're about love. Their eyes are tov ayin. We have two Kohanim over there. Tov ayin. They have a generous eye. They want to bestow upon their brother. And therefore, they bless the Jewish people. And you have to know that by blessing the Jewish people, you yourself elevate in stature and in value in God's eyes. Hashem wants to see people who love Am Yisrael. Inside Mr. Davis and Neshama, it's a piece of godliness. Therefore, I'm supposed to love him. And I'm supposed to want for him all that is good in this world. Should have bracha and parnasa and rifua and briu. And all the good we have to want upon each other. Let me ask you a question. Imagine we're sitting, we have a moment of silence. Is Boris Mushev in the room? Good, I don't see you. Imagine, we're sitting, you're eating your eggs, I'm eating my eggs. It's quiet. It's All of a sudden, I start my sentence with, and then, or end, and then I start talking. And you say, what do you mean end? What is end? You weren't talking to me before. Why end? You don't start a sentence with end. 
what's going on? This week's parashah, vizot, and this. What do you mean, and this? Why is that the pasuk with a vav? The Orachayim HaKadosh explains, Lomar, milivad kol mat shepa'al ve'asa Moshe bimei chayav, hosif levarechet b'nei Yisrael ve'az nikra isha Elohim. Don't think that in order to be a man of God, all you have to do is get up and dive nets every day and put on tefillin Rashi and Rabbein Utam and give some tzedakah that you big, big guns in Hashem's eyes. It's very nice. You're very special. But you're not yet Isha Elohim. All the work Moshe did the last 40 years wasn't enough until he added to it that he blessed the Jewish people. Only when he was able to bless the Jewish people, Vizot HaBerachah! And the Beracha, now he's called Isha Elohim, says Orachayim HaKadosh. Only with all your 40 years, Tfilat Netz, Shaharit Min Harvid, Daf Yomi, all the good stuff. And then you want good upon the Jewish people. You want to bless the Jewish people. You bless your neighbor that he should get another Tesla. Is that a blessing? No. It's not, right? It's a curse. Why? Why is it a curse? Why is that a curse? He's giving it to the God. What if he's a millionaire? He should be buying Tesla stock. Why are you talking about the millionaire? Rabotai, we're going to add you to Rafi's chat where he's going to give you advice, Mizrat Hashem. Harel alu limud atzum venora. Look at this unbelievable lesson. Moshe Rabbeinu Ava Nivi. Moshe was the biggest Navi, the biggest prophet. Asher diber Hashem panim panim. Noten Torah le'am Yisrael. Ala lemal arbaim yom. You never heard of somebody who didn't eat and drink 40 days? And don't say you do. 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't eat and he didn't go bombing people in Tel Aviv. Yes? 40 days, 40 days and 40 nights. Moshe didn't eat. He went up to Gan Eden with all of his greatness. He was not called Isha Elohim until he blessed the Jewish people. Because we, it's important to bless each other. It's important. They didn't have water over there. Poland Spring doesn't deliver over there. Uber, Uber Eats was out of service. What comes out, Rabbi Zai? He says, from here you learn the chashivut, the importance of wishing good upon your brother. Of not being stingy with your brother. Of not being jealous of your brother. To what you should have, bracha, revahat, laha, yeshuot. Parnasah, you should want good upon the Jewish people. And not to be, ah, this guy, ah, it's not fair, ah. To want good upon the Jewish people, to be full eyes, to be happy eyes, to be tov ayin. And then you could give people berachot. And then you're going to be called also Yisha Elohim. Omnam, yesh li idmonin madu ayim kenim tim moshir. So why did Moshe wait to the end of his life? If it's so important to bless somebody, why are you waiting 40 years? He's about to retire. Okay, guys, you know, I think now is the time to say, I, I appreciate this and I appreciate... Why are you waiting to the end? In the beginning, you should have blessed them. Amar biyavin kol yamav shel Moshe. Moshe wanted to bless them all his life. The malach amav, the angel of death, didn't let him. What did he do? Natlu kaftov hinihot tahat raglav umirchan lefanav. Wow. Moshe took him. He wrapped him up. He put him under his feet and he blessed the Jewish people. Hadaw dikhtiv lifnei moto. Lifnei mi, lifnei mi, lifnei zeh shayam mutal tahat raglav. Moshe took the angel of death. He broke him in half, karochi. He bent him in a few pieces. He put him under his legs. He says, tichas idi. What tichas idi? I'm going to bless the Jewish people. And he blessed the Jewish people. When you know, when you become a big tzaddik. He didn't kill the, the angel of death. Did, who had not Moshe die? Not through the angel of death. Angel of death had no power over Moshe. Hashem himself had to come and give him a kiss. And when he gave him that kiss, he took his neshama out from him. How holy it is, the kiss of God Almighty. Same way Aharon passed away. Same way Miriam passed away. Every tzaddik could pass away in such a way. Could become Kodesh Kodashim. He dies not with the hands of the angel of death. You know why a Kohen is not allowed to touch a dead body? Because it's impure. He's not allowed to come into a room with a dead body. Because it's impure. How did the body pass away? Through the Malach the angel of death. That's what makes you impure. But if a person dies with a neshika, a kiss of Hashem, that maybe is not metameh. This is not halokha lemaisa, of course, because, uh, you know, some kohanim say, I'm going to go to this tzaddik's grave. You're not allowed to go and touch a grave of a tzaddik. Kohanim, asur. 
The angel of death didn't let Moshe bless the Jewish people. Now you have to know, Rabotai, the angel of death knew that the angel, that the good eye is the one who's blessed. Don't read who Yevoreh, Yevorach, Ela Yevarech. Haynu Matai Zacham Moshe Lemaalat Yishaelokim Kashiv Rech Tzgel. The Amar Bi Meir. Kol Mavarech Tzgel Kino Mavarech Tashchina. Wow. Boris, when you bless the Jewish people, it's like you're blessing Hashem's divine presence. Uchshem Mavarechim Et Tashchina. You know what happens when you bless the Shechina? It blesses you back. It says, I'm going to bless you. Why? Because you bless me. You want to know? Sigula le parnasa Yom Kippur. Sigula le parnasa Yom Kippur. Bless Boris Moshe. Daven for him. Yes. Chudovan, you should have blah bracha. And more than that. Pray for the Jewish people. They shouldn't need one another in Parnasa. That means each one should have Parnasa b'shefa. And more than that, you daven for Hashem's Shechina. Hashem, may you take the Shechina of Galut this year. The Shechina says, You have honor for me. I'm going to honor you, says the Shechina. I'm going to give you Parnasa. Why? Because you cared about me. Come, have a seat. Now you have to know about Tai. When you give somebody a bracha, it's dangerous. You're playing with fire. If you bless a crook to be successful, what did you just bless? Sometimes I get nervous. One time I gave somebody a bracha, I felt like my neshama left me. Yeah, you got to be very careful. You don't, I can't say on recording, but you got to bless them in a way that's for the good. Hashem should give him bracha, revacha, v'atlacha, v'ma'asei In the hands of his work. In his bracha, he should have a bracha. In his industry. But to say, Bechol Ma'ase Adav, already there I get nervous. There I get nervous. What does that mean, Bechol Ma'ase Adav? And everything, no, 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 no. If he does what's good, I bless him. If he's legal, I bless him. If everything's legit, I bless him. Should have a tlaha. But if the guy's going to go rob Santander Bank tomorrow, or Chase Bank, I'm going to bless him, Bechol Ma'ase Adav. There you got to be careful. Aye. Dole with God Almighty. God pays me commission. So like this, Rabo Isai. <clears throat> the asks, why did you ask Vizot Aberacha? That's question number one. And the second question is, why Lifne Moto? In the end of the last parasha, the Torah says Hashem made a decision. Hashem made a decision. He says, Moshe, you're not going to Eretz Israel. Why? You didn't sanctify my name. Why? Because you hit the rock. So what? I hit the rock. What's the big deal? You hit the rock. People didn't get the point. You didn't sanctify me. You should have spoken to the rock. You don't talk with your hands. You talk with your mouth. Yes, you got to talk to the rock. You got to show people the main atzlacha in your life is by talking. When you talk, that's your main atzlacha. It's not in ma'asei adai, my handiwork. When you hit the rock and it gave water, it was a miracle. But the lesson you send the people is, I got to do parnasa, rabbi, hishtadlut, hishtadlut. That's the lesson people understood. You should have taught them a higher lesson. Hishtadlut, hishtadlut. With their mouth, if they would pray, deals would come easy. They would uh, chick chak, they would, they would close deals. Allah, Hashem said, you should go. Rabim Shualim, Let me ask you a question. How was the Torah writing about Moshe's death? Wasn't Moshe the one who wrote the Torah? Oh. Rabim Shualim Moshe Shinitna Torah Aliado. Echi Skirbo Akatuv Mita. Hello, Matsinu Mishelo Yigel Malato. Oh, it's a different question. Moshe got the Torah, and the Torah writes that he died. We have people like Eliyahu, we have people like Hanoch. Torah never says they died. Moshe Rabbeinu was on a greater level than them and it mentions his death. Why? Because Moshe, on his level, made a mistake. He was ne'inash, that the Torah writes that Moshe died. He was punished, that was a punishment. He didn't fulfill the top tap that he was supposed to on a certain level. Hanukh and Eliyahu never did an avera. And that's what the Torah never mentions a death. 
Now the Torah says, every generation Moshe Rabbeinu comes inside the Jewish people. He manifests himself in each and every generation. And you could get to the level that Moshe Rabbeinu comes inside of you. And he talks through your mouth. The Shekhinah is midabberet mitoch gironu. Moshe Rabbeinu never dies. How do we know? The Torah writes over there, Vekama amazeh, no, you're going to be shokhev im avotecha vekam, you're going to get up, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu. From here is the remez, two things. And number one, we're going to have tchiyat ha-metim. And number two is Moshe Rabbeinu is the one, he comes in each and every generation to what to manifest Torah to Kulal Yisrael. So we read about Moshe Rabbeinu and we learn lessons from him, Yosef. What's the greatest lesson you learned from Moshe Rabbeinu? What's the greatest lesson you learned from Moshe Rabbeinu? You have to bless the Jewish people. You have to want greatness upon Am Israel. We have to remove the jealousy and politics from each other. And when we do this, the Shekhinah will rest upon us. But more than that, it's Moshe was Anav Mikol Adam. He was the most humble. He wasn't assuming. He wasn't, you know who I am. Look at my watch. Look at my ring. Look at my this. Look at my that. Look at my house. Mm. Moshe was the most unassuming person. He gave kavod to people. You want to know if you're humble? See how much respect you like to give to people. See how you feel when other people get respect. If it bothers you, it shows you have gava. If you don't give people respect, it shows we have gava. But when we give other people kavod, you can respect somebody, honor somebody. You can want somebody else to be honored. Yeah, somebody buys chotoni, you're happy for him. Yes, but didn't buy. Every year, put me in, Billy Nader. The point is, is that you're happy for him. That shows you're humble. And by being humble, Hashem says, Yisrael asher b'chayit par hiratzon, that we complete the Torah in just a week's time. That we're going to start to learn the Torah from the beginning. Bereshit bara Elohim. The Torah ends, le'ayne kol Yisrael, the letter Lamed. And the next letter is, Bereshit. The letter Bet. Lamed and Bet give you? Live. It's to show you that the Jew, a big... Part of being Am Israel is the heart that you have. You have to have a big heart, a heart that wants to bless, a heart that wants to be generous. And Agadosh Baruch Hu should bless us with a Hakka Shir Vesameach Baruch Anraile Ulam. Amen, Amen.